Hi, I'm Armand, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to view multi track frequency spectrums in one window. And I'm gonna do this by using BlueCat Freq Analyst Multi. The DAW I'm using, as you can see, is Ableton Live 9, but this method is applicable to any DAW. The concept is very simple, but it might be terrifying when you don't know how to do that and don't understand it. The concept of using BlueCat Freq Analyst Multi as a tool to view multiple track frequency spectrums is just loading multiple instances of this plugin on different tracks and connect them together with internal routing of that plugin. For this tutorial, I've prepared a 4-track loop, which I think is very suitable for this tutorial. Because despite the fact that it's just 4 tracks, it's very messy right now. Okay, let's take a listen to this loop. And it's different tracks in solo. It's a drum and bass double sub kind of loop that I've made with drum and bass loops, massive patch making that quant on the bass line, and a harmor for that metallic lead. The first thing we need to do is to load an instance of the plugin on the first track. As you can see when the plugin opens, it goes straight to the routing window. In this window, you can actually route individual tracks to individual channels. In this window, you get to decide which part of the signal of the track is assigned to a channel. For example, you can route the instant curve of the left side of the signal or average, which means the stereo signal to channel 1. In this tutorial, we always route the average curve of the average signal, which means the average curve of the stereo signal of the track to a unique channel for each individual track and I rename these channels same as the track names. This little menu determines what channel 1 or 2 in the routing window means, left, right or mid side. It's better to increase the precision and speed of the refresh rate of the spectrum to see more accurate results. Let's see it in action. <laughs> What you saw was the average curve of the stereo channel of the track 1. Let's put another instance of the plugin on the track 2. Remember the freq analyst must be the last plugin on the effect chain of the track. For this track, we assign the average curve of the stereo signal of this track to another channel number and rename it the same as the track name. This time, instead of manually increasing the precision and speed of refresh rate, we push this setting from the first instance of the plugin to this instance, with clicking on the global push button on the first instance. And as you can see, the setting on the second instance change accordingly. Now, if you play the loop, we can see multiple frequency spectrums together. It's always better to click on the sync button on the top before its measurement. Voila! You just saw two different tracks, frequency spectrums in one window. Now if you repeat the procedure for the two other tracks, we can see four track frequency spectrums in just one window. So we load an instance of the plugin on the other tracks and route the average or stereo signal of those tracks to unoccupied unique channel numbers. And again, we use the global push button to push the maximum precision setting 
to all instances of the plugin available in this project. Now if you play the loop, you can see four different frequency spectrums for four different tracks. And that's awesome. Another cool feature of this plugin is the diff view. In diff view, you can see the calculated difference of two spectrums. And this is so helpful for comparing your spectrum to your reference track spectrum. This means if you want to match your spectrum to your reference track spectrum, you just have to EQ according to the X spectrum you see in this view. Viewing multi-track frequency spectrum is the most useful tool for mixing, EQing, and even mastering to a reference track. The routing method discussed in this tutorial is also applied on other Bullocast multi-plugins, like Stereo Scope Multi, which shows a stereo image of multiple tracks, which is also a very useful tool for mixing. I hope this tutorial was useful to you and you learned something. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments below. This was my second tutorial and you can check my other tutorial on how to make a Swedish House Mafia 1 kick to bass, which I put its link in the description. I hope you liked this tutorial. Thank you for watching.